Well, sir, it's late afternoon as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mrs. Victor Gook and young Mr. Rush Gook. Sade quietly darns socks near the window while her son, who arrived home only a moment ago, returns from the hallway where he's deposited his hat and overcoat. Listen. How's everything with you? Pretty fair. Where you been since dinner? A dozen different places. Rooster Davis come along and hollered outside shortly after you left? Probably in search of my personal society. I have an idea that's what he wanted. Anybody else? No. I saw Milton and Leland walk past, but they never stopped. Milton and Leland attended the matinee at the Bijo. Hmm. I've been in the personal society of Smelly Clark and Leroy Snow all afternoon. Tatman's vacant lot? Part of the time. Mom, I discovered something today, you know it? What'd you discover? I'm getting on in years. <laughs> so is everybody. No, but I am. I haven't got the endurance I used to have. Know why I come home? Why? Decided I'd lay down on the Davenport and take a nap. Sleepy? Yeah. Imagine me taking a nap in the afternoon. Why, I haven't done that since I was four years old. I guess you're getting pretty feeble. I think so. Time is telling on me. The reason is I've lived too vigorous. Can't stand the gap anymore like I used to. Well, maybe we'll have to send you to the old men's home. No, but no kidding. You'd look fine in the old men's home at age 14. I think Julius Caesar went to pot when he was around 20. Maybe it was Napoleon. Somebody in history. Well, did you tire yourself out this afternoon? That's why you feel like an ass? I never done nothing strenuous. Never played any vigorous games or nothing. I took life as it come, and here I am sleepy at 4 o'clock. What all did you do? Well, when I left here after dinner, I strolled over to Tatman's vacant lot to see who was around. Bumped into the society of Smelly Clark and Leroy Snow. We decided to go downtown to witness the Christmas tree in the lobby of the Butler House Hotel. We stuck around there and sat on the big leather Davenport until the desk clerk began to give us dirty looks. Then we sat on the courthouse concrete embankment till we got cold. Then we went to Leroy's house and cracked nuts on the basement floor for a while. Then we went outdoors and watched the men fix up the street. Then we went back to Tatman's vacant lot. Then we walked downtown again. That was a little while ago. I told Smelly and Leroy goodbye and come on home. Felt sleepy? Yeah. Did I mention anything that sounded strenuous? Oh, you've done quite a bit of walking. Nothing strenuous to walking. Why, I've seen the day a few years back when I could have walked all night long. <laughs> When did you ever do that? I never actually done it, but I could have. No. No, like I say, this old body ain't what it used to be. I've been going at a pretty rapid speed these last five or six years. Human flesh won't stand the wear and tear. Mm -hmm. Why, <laughs> one afternoon this summer, I fished 14 innings of baseball and felt fresh as a daisy when I got through. Had a flush on my cheek and a twinkle in my eye. Uh -huh. Look at me now, weak and droopy. How am I ever going to get supper groceries? You won't be able to drag yourself to the store, will you? Without a cane and a trained nurse. <laughs> I see you think I'm joking. Uh-uh. I can tell you're getting old. There's little wrinkles underneath your eyes, and I bet if we hunted, we'd find some gray hairs. <laughs> okay. Uncle Steamer turned gray very early. Only 26, I believe it was, when his hair was completely white. What hair he had. He was getting bald at the same time, and his friends used to josh him and lay bets on what he'd be first. White-headed or bald-headed? Them events take place in Dixon, Illinois? Uh-huh. An individual can't get around life, can they? No, I guess not. Life is full of surprises. Sure is. <laughs> like Miss Towerman brought back my fancy 98-cent apple corer today. I thought that had gone up the flu for good. She borrowed it three months ago. Life is full of surprises and people are strange. You run into some strange people this afternoon? Mildred Tisdale come along while me and Smelly and Leroy were sitting on the courthouse embankment. She'd been at Yamilton's buying something for her mother. Stopped and chatted with us a minute. Mildred acts strange? She talks strange. What'd she say? Oh, a lot of different junk. For one thing, she said she felt like a violin. Violin? Fiddle. Huh. Said she felt like her soul was full of beautiful music. Oh. Uh. She said yesterday she woke up feeling like a rainbow. Rainbow, huh? Felt like her soul was full of flashing colors. Uh -huh. Of course, that started Smelly and Leroy off. Smelly said he woke up this morning feeling like an ash can. Said his soul felt like it was full of potato peeling. <laughs> Leroy said he woke up feeling like a freight train. Soul felt like it was full of soot and coal dust. <laughs> but you know, Mom, I never laughed at that. Uh, didn't you? No. And that's another reason why I think I'm getting on in years. I'm more serious. 
grass angle I'm attempting to put across? Uh-huh. A year or so ago, I would have let out a great big haw-haw at Smelly and Leroy making fun of Mildred Tisdale. But not anymore. Nowadays, I monkey around with deep topics. Mm-hmm. I leave foolishness to the children. Uh-huh. Take me last Friday when I was downtown looking in Hamilton's window where they had all the mechanical toys hopping around. Oh, all right. The other people were all dazzled by the bright colors. They were laughing at the comical clowns and so forth. Uh-huh. But not me. I stood back from the crowd a little ways and thought about life. My. I wore a little smile of pity. Really? I was pitying those individuals that didn't realize Christmas was only temporary. Mm. How about that nap you were going to take? I'm not keeping you up with my talk, am I? No, go right ahead. I enjoy the sound of human voices. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Anyway, didn't you say I had to go to the store? If we're going to have any supper. Okay. Hey, and that's another thing. Another thing what? Another thing that shows I'm getting on in years. Why? I'm resigned to stuff. You tell me I have to go to the store, and I just smile a gentle little smile and say, okay. It used to be I'd kick and argue and try to get out of going. But I realize since I've grown older, there's no use in attempting to get around life. I smile a gentle little smile. My shoulders sag slightly, and... I say, okay, ma'am, what do you want from the store? <laughs> Some individuals try to fool themselves. Take Ed Miller up at school. Ed's a lot older than I am, going on 17. And he acts like a kid. He'll find out, though. He'll tear along through life, acting like he's a youngster, and all of a sudden he'll fall in a heap. person's got to watch herself. Uh, when did you discover this feebleness of yours? This afternoon? Yeah, when I felt this desire to come home and take a nap. I thought about it all the way from town. Mm. I said to myself, Rush, old boy, you're slipping. Better take it easy. That's what you said to yourself, huh? Better words to that effect. Well, I can see you're pretty much of an old man, but I wouldn't coddle myself too much. Oh, no. I'll continue to lead an active life. I'll get around to various places. But I'm going to cut down on the intense speed. I've been a human dynamo for a good many years now, and it's beginning to show on me. An individual that lets herself... You want to answer that? Okay. Maybe I'd better, though, since you're so weak. Well, I will. Hello? Oh, hello there. Oh, nothing. Just got home a couple minutes ago. Huh? Oh, monkeying around with smelling Leroy. Huh? When? Sure. Well, will they let us use the trapeze? You can fix it? Swell. Sure. Well, look, come by and holler for me after supper. Okay. Well, that's great, Rooster. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fella. So long. Where's he been? Rooster? Oh, here and there. I haven't seen much of him. I saw his mother in his tea burgers last week. Oh, I bet that's your father. Oh, I got it. Paul? Oh, hello, Chuck. Where you been since the cat died? Oh, is that so? I was in Chicago myself a couple months. What? Why, gosh, I wish I could, but I promised Rooster Davis I'd go down to YMCA with him. Say, how long are you going to play? Oh. Well, couldn't I join you later? Fine. Fine, Chuck. You bet. Okay. And I'll bring Rooster along. That's Andy, Chuck. So long. Chuck who? Chuck Myers, kid in my algebra class. He wants you to do something? Yeah, big game of fox and geese scheduled for tonight. Ain't that the thing where you run all over town? Yeah, heck of a lot of fun. Uh, I'll probably be home kind of late, Mom, because I can't get in the game till 9 o'clock. What you gonna be doing till 9 o'clock? Doing stunts on the trapeze and flying rings down at the YMCA. Oh, uh, guess I'd better go to the store now, hadn't I? Yeah. I'll see if I can get this poor old body up off the Davenport. Yeah, see if you can. Boy, I'm getting on in years. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. <laughs>